Hey everyone, and welcome to a much belated WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week and sharing some practical security tips along the way. I'm your host and security aficionado, Corey Nockreiner, and this is the episode for the week that started October 21st, 2013. So I was traveling last week for WatchGuard in Dubai and Amsterdam, and as a result, I didn't have a chance to get our show out on Friday. But I thought I'd release a quick, short episode in the middle of this week to make up for it. Let's start really quick with software updates. I'm not going to talk about them because you can read about them on WatchGuard Security Center's blog. But this week, both Apple released a ton of updates, and VMware released some updates for their hypervisors. So if you use any Apple products or any VMware products, be sure to go get the latest updates. So let's start with news of pacemaker hacking, or more specifically, potential hacking of implanted cardiac defibrillators. You might remember from early in the year, one of my predictions was a cyber attack could result in a human death. And one of the th proof points I used for this prediction was some research from a now deceased uh, a researcher named Jack Barnaby, where he showed how he could hijack wireless pacemakers and send shocks to them. Well, during 60 Minutes last Sunday, we learned that previous Vice President Dick Cheney actually had the wireless signal on his implanted cardiac device disabled because his doctors and others worried that potential terrorists might kill him using this particular wireless signal. Now this doesn't prove my prediction, but it does prove that computer hacks are extending to many, many types of devices that we don't necessarily consider computers, and that we need to start taking security in mind when designing these new embedded computing devices. Next up is another big watering hole attack. If you're a web developer or administrator that uses PHP and you visited php.net recently, you might want to check your computer for malware. During the week it was learned that PHP Net was hijacked. One of the, the JavaScript files on their site was hijacked and forced visitors to uh, redirect to an exploit framework kit, a site that would then detect the victim's browser and then try to redirect them to the proper exploit. And it uh, seems that this kit used a lot of flash vulnerabilities because it sent malicious SWF files. PHP has since admitted the attack and has cleaned it up. But again, if you use PHP and you visited php.net recently, you might when to check your computers. Another story last week was news of more consumer router and network access storage device hacks. During last week, we learned that some of Netgear's routing devices and their ReadyNAS network storage device suffered from a number of vulnerabilities. The vulnerabilities against the router were actually just backdoors in the web management access interface, just like the ones we mentioned in D-Link last week, although there were also some code injection and cross-site scripting flaws. And then there's the ReadyNAS network storage device which suffered cross-site scripting flaws, which could allow an attacker to essentially inject some PHP code onto your ReadyNAS storage device. And long story short, in both cases, whether it's your router or your ReadyNAS device, they could gain remote access and, and full re-access of the device so they could do whatever they wanted. Now, so for some of these vulnerabilities, like the ReadyNAS vulnerabilities, there are patches available. So if you run ReadyNAS, you should go and get the latest firmware. But researchers are worried because most uh, consumers Consumers don't update their routers or their storage devices very often, if at all. In fact, the researcher that found the ReadyNAS vulnerabilities has used Shodan and has found over 10,000 vulnerable devices with the web administrative page uh, available on the internet. So anyways, the moral of the story is if you're a consumer and you run these network routers, be sure to update the firmware as often as possible, even for your printers and your network storage devices. All these devices really are just embedded computers and they need software updates just like the software running on your PC. 
So the final and big story from last week is the news that if you just call yourself a hacker, you might go to jail or at least have your computer seized. News from Idaho last week was that a judge in a, a certain court case uh, took a computer of a software developer named Corey Thehoon only because he called himself a hacker on his website. Now if you're in the information security industry, you know that hacker nowadays in the media has a negative connotation as far as a computer attacker. However, it started with positive roots, and many software developers and, and security researchers consider hacker a good term. It's a term for a person that, that kind of gets things done in an out-of-the-box fashion. So a lot of people use hacker as an honorific. It doesn't have to be an evil attacker. Nonetheless, Corey is a software developer that has a startup software company, and, and due to a case involving another company he worked for and some software he's releasing, which is similar to software he created while he worked for this other company, that has him in this court case. And because of this court case and the worry that this company thinks he's going to release this software that they think is legally theirs, uh, the judge decided that since he called himself a hacker, he may try to release this software without letting people know it was him. And for that reason, they seized his computer. Well, personally, I think this is a horrible precedence. You can't just seize people's computer because they say something on their website. And on top of that, the judge obviously misunderstands the term hacker. Sure, I will admit that in the media and to most of the, the population, hacker does have a negative connotation and I've, I've learned to accept that. Yet you need to understand how the roots of hacker if you're going to use it as, as a, a, a reason to see someone's computer. And in this case, a software developer calling himself a hacker just means he thinks he's a good software developer. In any case, this is going to be an interesting case to follow since hopefully it won't set a bad precedence for the future. Well, that's it for this week's episode. I'm sorry I'm posting it so late simply because of my busy, busy travel schedule. But I still will release another video in the next few days on, on the normal date on Friday, so be sure to follow that. As always, if you want more regular security stories, be sure to follow our blog, WatchGuardSecurityCenter.com. You can also follow me on Twitter. I'm at SecAdept, or follow WatchGuard at WatchGuardTech. And as I always end with, here at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you. Thank <laughs> you.